In 1848, Europe exploded into chaos. Italian revolutionaries rose up, demanding unification as the Hungarians proclaimed Hungary independent. Crucially for this video, the Bourbon in France were dethroned and the Second French Republic was proclaimed, with Louis Napoleon, the nephew of the original Napoleon, as its president. However, just three years later, Louis Napoleon would stage a coup d'etat with him proclaiming the creation of the Second French Empire, with himself, Napoleon III, as its emperor a year later. Meanwhile, in Prussia, a revolution would force the king to accept a constitution which would pave the way for a certain Otto von Bismarck to rise and become the Prime Minister of Prussia. Soon, Prussia would turn their attention to unifying the German states under their leadership, notably excluding Austria. Prussia was fearful of including Austria in the German Empire as Austria also included many minorities within her borders, which could be a huge destabilizing force within the Empire. Meanwhile, in Italy, Napoleon III was aiding the Piedmontese in their wars of Italian unification. After the Second War of Italian Independence, Piedmont managed to defeat the Austrians with French aid, and a bit later managed to unify Italy, which was a great achievement for the French Emperor. In 1866, due to a dispute in Schleswig-Holstein, the Austro-Prussian War between, well, Austria and Prussia broke out. As a result of that war, Prussia annexed many Austrian allies in the north while creating the North German Confederation, which it would conveniently lead. Prussia, now having unified North Germany, was looking for a way to secure the trust of the southern German states, which were highly tied with Austria. At the same time, France heavily opposed the creation of this confederation, seeing it as a threat to her ambitions in the region and especially the Rhineland. In 1868 Spain, Queen Isabella II was overthrown and the Spanish looked abroad for a new king. After careful consideration, the Spanish offered the throne to Leopold, the Prince of Hohenzollern and a relative of the Prussian king. France, not wanting to be encircled by a Prusso-Spanish alliance, registered protest. Otto von Bismarck would make expert use of the situation, making France declare war on the North German Confederation. The southern independent German states, seeing France as the aggressor, would fold their armies under Prussian leadership. The war was a massive success. For the Germans, that is. The Prussians performed extremely well in the war and even managed to capture the French Emperor in the Battle of Sedan. When news reached Paris, a revolution ensued and the Third French Republic was proclaimed. After the Germans took Strasbourg and Metz, they laid a brutal siege to Paris. Ultimately, in early 1871, France was forced to sign a peace with Prussia, which simultaneously proclaimed together with the smaller German states the creation of the German Empire in Versailles. In the peace negotiations, Germany annexed Elsass-Lothringen, altering French politics for the foreseeable future. A new great power has emerged in Central Europe and will begin to spike up tension in the following years. So what if that didn't happen? What if France proved herself victorious once more? Well, there were a few factors at play that allowed Prussia to defeat France in our timeline. The French army was led directly by Napoleon III in a similar fashion to his uncle just 50 years prior, while the Prussian army was led by much more competent generals like Helfmann von Malky. On top of that, the Prussians were able to use the railways much more effectively, which allowed them to bring their army faster to the front lines. 
In my opinion, however, to make France win, not much needs to be changed. We can either make Napoleon III a more competent general or replace him with one. Either way, I still see Prussia making major pushes into France due to them being able to bring their full force to the front lines much faster. The major turning point in the war would be the Battle of Sedan. We will have France score a major military victory over the Prussians, destroying a large part of the German army. The Prussians then would begin to retreat as the French began chasing them down. Soon they'll reach the border and the Prussians will be kicked out of France. This is where the real fun starts. France would cross the border and invade the Rhineland, which will send shockwaves throughout Europe, with French forces busy in Germany, Italy, just like in our timeline, would see this as an opportunity to invade and annex Papal Rome. Meanwhile, Germany would be in total chaos as France continues to march north. Prussia would have no other option but to sue for peace. Now, with the Prussians defeated, don't expect France's boundaries to reach the River Rhine. Such an outcome would be unanimously discredited by the great powers, and especially Britain, who was opposed to a strong imperial France. Instead, we can expect France to demand the Saarland, while also being allowed to purchase Luxembourg from the Dutch king. In our timeline, the Prussians heavily opposed the plan, seeing it as a threat to their security, and demanded France to back down. In addition to this, France would dissolve the North German Confederation, undoing all the progress Prussia made in the Austro-Prussian War. At the same time, the southern German states, though sympathetic to Prussia, would likely form their own bloc, likely under the leadership of Bavaria. Austria, on the other hand, will likely not be interested in German politics. In 1867, they were forced to accept the Austro-Hungarian Compromise, and the Hungarians would be very wary of an Austria that would try to rekindle German influence. Before we continue, if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. A large percentage of you are still not subscribed, and it would mean a ton to me if you subscribe. Anyways, let's get back with the video. So what we have right now is a Europe without Germany. Instead, we have a weakened Prussia in the north, while in the south we have a loosely united South German state, led by Bavaria. Austria is also there, but they have largely pulled themselves out of German politics. Meanwhile, in France, it's likely that Napoleon III would die shortly after his victory, and his son, Napoleon Eugene Louis Jean Joseph Bonaparte, would take the throne as Napoleon IV. Britain will grow wary of Imperial France, mainly because they will have just humiliated Prussia and now look set on expanding their influence in the Rhine. Land. As all of this is unfolding, Russia will cross the border and invade the Ottoman Empire, kickstarting the Russo-Turkish War of 1877. The Russians, just like in our timeline, would perform very well, but the final outcome will be left to Western arbitration. It's likely that Europe will be a bit more sympathetic to Russia due to the absence of Germany, likely resulting in a Bulgaria which is already united with Romelia. Either way, not much is changed from our timeline, at least not yet. Soon, France and Britain will begin to contest colonially. An alternate Berlin the Berlin Conference, likely taking place somewhere else, would see the Franco-British rivalry at its peak. Africa would be partitioned mostly between the two great powers. Prussia is in no position to demand major colonies like in our timeline, but this weakness may result in them getting a major prize like the Congo. It's likely that Britain gives the Congo to Prussia in order to prevent France from getting it. In the end, I see Britain emerging victorious in the negotiations, 
managing to create a land bridge from Cape Town to Cairo. Overall, the atmosphere is really tense and it seems like a great war is brewing. Since Britain holds significant influence in the Ottoman Empire, Russia would move diplomatically closer to France to combat against the British. The German states afraid of being encircled by a French dominated alliance would likely team up with the British. Austria likely remains neutral which automatically places Italy in the British sphere of influence as they have many territorial claims on the French Empire. How the war starts is difficult to predict but I expect the war to come soon. Now, looking at this map, I can say with confidence that the British are going to win the war. There is absolutely no way France can compete with the British Royal Navy and unless Napoleon IV proves himself equally skilled as his great uncle, it's almost certain that France loses the land war too. The Prussian army was really effective and with an Italian front in the south, France is doomed for a defeat. Meanwhile, over in Russia, the Prussians will make decent gains in Poland before the front line stabilizes. Soon, I expect some kind of revolution in France to topple the French Empire and establish a new republic before requesting peace. France loses Luxembourg, the Saarland and Alsace-Lorraine to Prussia as the German states unite, forming a united German Empire. In Africa, Britain gains a majority of the French colonial empire and for Russia, depending on how long the war lasted, we can see a negotiated peace, with Russia losing Poland and gaining minor territories from the Ottomans. As for Italy, they'd gain Tunisia and their French claims. At this point, we've moved too far into the timeline to predict further. But I don't expect peace to last, as Europe suddenly becomes very aware of an emerging German empire capable of dominating the continent. But hey, what do you think would have happened had France won the Franco-Prussian War? Let me know in the comments below, but for now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to like and subscribe for videos like this every other week. Thank you guys so much for the support for the previous video, it really means a lot to me. I hope to continue this channel for as much as I can. And as always, make sure to suggest any scenario that you would like to see me cover. Anyways, goodbye.